Hello. Welcome to BGU Lincoln. My name is Chris Ives and I'm the Interim Programme Leader for the BA Honours Primary Teaching Studies with QTS, or PTS for short. This short video will provide you with an overview of the programme and what it's like to study with us within a blended delivery programme. So to begin with, we're going to look at the entry requirements. That tends to be the one area that um, that people want to know about first of all. So the entry requirements for PTS is very similar to that of uh, any other ITE, uh, primary ITE course that BGU offers, uh, with an additional level of, of requirement, which we'll talk about shortly. But essentially, the absolute minimum is the GCSEs in, in grade four or C in English, maths and science. All primary ITE courses, in fact, all ITE courses throughout the country require those, those three GCSEs for primary education as a minimum. However, we do accept equivalence tests. So if you don't have that level four or that, level, or that grade C in GCSE English, Maths and Science, if you email admissions at bishopg.ac.uk, you can ask them to find out more about what, how equivalency works and what that looks like. Because this is a top-up degree, we also require a relevant foundation degree. Now, these range from foundation degrees such as early childhood studies, professional learning, um, learning and teaching, etc. So when you apply, our admissions team will be able to map your foundation degree to check its suitability um, against the PTS top-up degree. So if your foundation degree is something to do with education, um, you're more likely, it's more likely that that foundation degree will be sort of accepted and be more easily mapped against the, the PTS top-up. If your foundation degree is in something that's sort of completely away from, uh, from education, then it may be that it might not be a relevant foundation degree in which to go to the PTS top-up. Uh, but a relevant foundation degree is, is, is an entry requirement that is needed. Because it's a blended programme, there are two other things that are slightly different compared to a traditional three-year undergraduate um, or a one-year PGCE following completion of a full undergraduate degree. And those two things are um, a requirement for you as a candidate to be either employed working in a primary school as a TA or you're volunteering two days a week um, as a TA in a school. So we need that as part of that entry requirement because many of the sessions, what they do is they, um, they're done in a way that you make those links with what you're seeing day to day or week by week, by week in that school. So we require you to be either employed or volunteering in a school for two days, uh, a minimum of two days a week. And the fourth entry requirement is a, a head teacher agreement form. Now this form is sort of signed by you, it's signed by the head teacher in the school that you are either volunteering at or you work at. And th the agreement form agrees to release you for study. So we'll talk a little bit about how the, the course is structured in terms of uh, this blend and, and what it looks like. But that for the majority of the time, you will be working remotely, you can be working at home and online. But there are certain days that we require you on campus. So that head teacher form agrees to release you for those for those days, those campus based days. The head teacher form also agrees to release you from your duties as a teaching assistant during those blocks of placement where you transition from that teaching assistant to that of a trainee teacher. Um, we can talk more a little bit about the head teacher agreement forms in any of our drop in sessions that uh, that, that we offer as well. So just talking about placements, as an overall sort of view of it, there has to be 120 days in by design um, of placement in schools. On top of that, from new from 2024, are 20 days of what we call intensive training and practice. And this is a new Department for Education um, compliance requirement. Essentially what an ITAP is, or Intensive Training and Practice, or ITAP for short, essentially what an ITAP is, is putting aspects of teaching under a microscope and really 
sort of digging deep into that certain component that we're looking at sort of um, explaining to you and we're wanting you to sort of develop. So for example, one of the ITAPs might be looking at low level behavior in particularly looking at um, strategies to reduce or prevent low level behavior. Um, so those 20 days of ITAP can take place in the home school, um, but they are in addition to those 120 days of placement. So all in all, it's 140 days within the 16 months um, that you will be working in a school. In terms of the, the sort of main placement blocks, uh, we offer it as three placements over the 16 months. The introductory placement um, is traditionally in sort of autumn. So it's usually in the autumn term. You'll be with us for a, a few weeks and then we send you into those schools or release you into the school. Um, the developing placement normally takes place the following summer or spring, that next year, and then the extending takes place the following autumn. So three placements in total, they gradually increase in, in, in length and duration. And of course, the, uh, the requirements, what we require you to be doing in those placements increases as well. We don't expect you to be going into a school um, for that introductory placement and teaching absolutely everything. We sort of gradually uh, build, build you up to teaching what you need to be teaching. So just unpicking placements a little further in terms of its structure, sort of mentioned how that introductory placement takes place in the autumn term. Um, this can be actually in your home school. And again, as part of that head teacher agreement form, which is that entry requirement, one of those entry requirements, it will stipulate on there that they agree to host um, or potentially agree to host you as a trainee for that introductory placement. So that can be in that home school where you are employed uh, or where you volunteer. And as I sort of said to you, it's about making you um, confident and competent in teaching. So we don't throw you in at the deep end. It's very much that sort of um, structured coaching and building up that, that sort of teaching experience. So for that introductory placement, you'll only be teaching up to about 50% of the timetable for a few weeks. Um, then you come back to us and engage with online study and engage with those on-campus days. And your developing placement, which then takes place during spring and summer, this is one that needs to be in an alternative setting so it can't be done in your home school. Uh, and this is one where we will start you off at the 50%, so you start where you left off on the introductory placement and we build you up then to the 80% um, for around about three, four weeks um, on that developing placement in an alternative setting. And then if we keep going through then to the extending placement, which takes place the following at the following autumn, again, this could be back in your home school and that's you, again, teaching up to 80%. This time it's for the majority of the placement. So you can hopefully see from there how we sort of build you up to teaching um, that, that 80%. In terms of the sort of, um, I put on there the boring bit, but in terms of the DFE compliance, that is, you are required to tip for 120 days of placement as an absolute minimum. And essentially the, the, the sort of, the regulations are that six weeks has to be taught to 80% across two different settings. So that's where you can see those, those six weeks at 80%, some of those weeks in that developing and the majority in that extending, and they're across two different settings that way. So it is possible to have your home school for your first placement and that last placement, but that middle placement needs to be elsewhere. So I'm going to spend just a few moments now talking about the structure of the actual course itself. I mentioned earlier that it's it quite unique in that it's a blended route, meaning that the majority of your study can be conducted at home um, with some centre-based sessions. So I'm just going to sort of explain, explain that a little bit now. The course is structured, um, so around about six to seven days over the 16 months is face-to-face -face teaching at BGU Lincoln. So we would require you on campus for, for, for those days. Um, everything else is a combination of what we call online live and those online live sessions are always in the evening so after school so it means that you can continue to sort of earn whilst you learn and then get home and engage with our online study um, the online live sessions 
And then everything else is what we call offline or asynchronous. And those sessions are sort of generally released to you on a Monday. Those offline sessions are released on a Monday. And you essentially have two weeks to complete those offline sessions. Um, the online live ones are currently running on a Thursday evening. And then, as I say, everything else is then face to face with us for those six to seven days over the year. In terms of the modules, you, there are seven modules that run all together over the 16 months. Um, in a nutshell, three of those modules really, really focus on pedagogy, curriculum and assessment. You know, the key tools for teaching, the, the sort of science of teaching or the art or the craft of teaching, if you like. Things around subject knowledge are brought in with those within those three modules as well. So everything that you need in terms of um, pedagogical knowledge, subject knowledge, how to plan, how to assess, you will find in those three modules. So that's PTS 601, 603 and 605. PTS 602 and 606 focus more on the sort of professional behaviours and the well-being, not just well-being of um, children, but also your own well-being um, and your sort of managing your own workload and your own expectations, you know, knowing how to interpret feedback, knowing how to or learning how to not see feedback as a criticism, uh, but as an opportunity for growth and development. Um, really thinking about that transition from a teaching assistant to a, to a trainee teacher to an ECT. Um, we, we sort of look at that entire golden thread of professional behaviours and strategies for you to support your sort of well-being uh, and CPD opportunities. And then for PTS 604 and 607, this is where we focus on, or where you will focus on behaviour management um, and inclusion. So things such as SEND, diversity, inclusion, all within, within those, those two modules. You'll sort of look at different approaches to behaviour management. Um, what the latest current government, uh, what the latest research is offering in terms of managing behaviour and managing challenging behaviour as well, um, not just about those low level disruption uh, or disruptive children, but also those that present quite substantially more challenging behaviour as well. So we offer you some insights and opportunities to kind of engage with those materials so that you feel confident in being able to sort of go into classrooms especially in the developing placement in a school that you may not know um, where you can go into that school from the outset and you've got a clear sort of bank of resources in terms strategies in terms of managing that behavior pts 607 still touches on that still touches on behavior and inclusion but it is more of a research project um, so it gives you the opportunity to explore an area of um, of of inclusion diversity, send, behaviour, um, and to do some sort of research in school around that kind of um, area of interest that you might have. In terms of assessments, um, you'd be pleased to know that there are no exams. Um, it's, always a, it's always a bonus, I found, um, because, uh, you know, an exam doesn't exemplify the knowledge that you've gained in all, the, all of those modules. So essentially what we have is a bit of a balance between sort of practical, online practical assignments and your more traditional written. So PTS 601, for example, is a written assignment. It is a written submission. Um, but PTS 602 is totally different. That is an online assessed discussion. So it's a little bit like a, um, a forum. Um, a little bit like mum's net I guess so we pose you a question that opens on a Monday we pose a question and then you have sort of seven days to to keep adding to that discussion to keep adding your thoughts to keep adding what research you found around this particular question and that's the sort of thing that we, we will be assessing that that ability to build on each other's points to remain professional because of course we want you to be professionally challenging one another within that within that forum. Um, so again, it's, it's quite a, an interesting way of, um, of completing an assessment, basically, but they tend to do fairly well on those. PTS 603, this is a unique one in that it's uh, part group, part individual written submission. So in order to, to sort of um, 
address those module outcomes. There are aspects of this where you will have to work with the group virtually, which is challenging, but really good practice for, for being a teacher. Uh, with networks and things like that that are finding more and more time on teams now rather than rather than face to face um, so there'll be aspects of that which is very much sort of working as a group and then you will all individually submit um, online to, to turn it in so it's it's a nice little combination there of a bit of group bit of written um, and then 604 and 605 they are both written submissions 606 is a really nice one um, where you will complete entries in a reflective journal and then you have a bit of an, a, a tutorial with a tutor where they, they, they sort of pull out a couple of those reflections and ask you to sort of elaborate on those a little bit more. And 607, as I sort of mentioned earlier, is that sort of research, little research project. So it is a little bit like a mini dissertation, a mini research project, but no exams. So how do we assess you during placements then? Uh, this is often a question that prospective candidates seem to ask and they understandably get a little bit worried about. Um, how we assess you is formatively. So we, we assess your, your school mentors will be assessing you all the time. We don't do sort of formal observations where a school mentor will observe you for one hour and then give you a graded piece of feedback. So saying it's outstanding or it requires improvement, that doesn't exist because we recognise that you are trainee teachers. So if we're assessing you against teacher standards three weeks into a course, how are you going to be anything other than requires improvement? It makes no sense. So we've done away with that. We've scrapped all of that. The way we assess you now is very much in a formative, ongoing way. So each week you'll have weekly meetings with your school mentor. Each week you will be observed, um, but it's no longer that sort of set summative um, one hour assessment. We recommend that you get observed um, infrequently over the week. So essentially you have something called a uh, trainee observation and progress record, which is that where it captures the outstanding stuff, the good stuff that you're doing. Um, it captures the sort of targets and things to think about. And we keep that open for a week so your school mentor can be constantly sort of adding little bits that, that they're spotting and seeing throughout the week rather than that sort of snapshot one hour window um, across the full week. So that's sort of how we assess formatively. At the end of each placement, your school mentor, your university based mentor, who's there to sort of quality assure everything and yourself will sit and complete what's known as an end of placement professional discussion. And that is a little bit more summative, but only in the sense of it aims to sort of pull out and tease out and capture all of the evidence that you've gained or provided throughout that placement block. So it's that discussion. It's that it's your ability to sort of articulate what it is that you've learned, how you've reflected on certain aspects um, and that is what we do for those three placements. So all three placements sort of do this. They build up to um, this summative assessment, which takes place at the end of the programme. And that is against the teacher standards. So we basically what we've done, we've taken the teacher standards. We've, um, we've filtered it down into something that we call um, a curriculum progress guide. And being on track at each of those phases means that when you get to that end point, that summative end point against the standards, um, you will make it. You will make it. Uh, and that summative end assessment is essentially done over teams between yourself and a member of the academic team. They will have sort of gone through your online portfolio where those weekly meetings and observations and discussions all, all sit. Um, and then again, it's your opportunity then to just sort of articulate and explain how it is that you are meeting those standards, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of how the assessing of placement is over the course of the programme. And then finally, I mentioned something called intensive training and practice earlier on. So this is sort of just how an ITAP is, is, is going to be structured. So this is new for all ITE providers, no matter where you go um, from 2024. Um, currently, we're trialling them. On, on PTS 
And we've, we've made some ad ad adaptations, some amendments to it. And essentially, this is probably going to be the structure um, for September 2024. So there are four ITAPs altogether. Uh, we look at things such as effective questioning um, in phonics. We look at low-level disruption. We look at modelling and worked examples in maths. And we look at assessing um, or assessments in terms of pupil progress. In terms of its structure, Monday will be an online live day. So this is where we, we sort of introduce you to, um, to questioning. What makes effective questioning? We introduce you to phonics. Um, you know, what is systematic synthetic phonics? Why do we use it? Um, how do we use questioning in phonics to sort of check people's knowledge and, and understanding? On the Tuesday to Thursday, this is then where you sort of do very specific tasks, um, either alongside your school mentor um, or on your own, and you upload relevant aspects of it to uh, one of our online platforms. But essentially on a Tuesday, it's a case of sort of analysing. So it might be a, a case for you going in and observing um, teachers um, and expert colleagues and how they use questioning to gauge understanding and the types of questions that's been used and that kind of thing. Um, on a Wednesday, it's this sort of what we would call um, rehearsing. So that's an opportunity then for you to sort of plan and practice, use what you've been given on the Monday with the sort of introductory, introductory sessions, what you've observed on that Tuesday. On the Wednesday, it's a case then for you to sort of plan to rehearse it perhaps with a group of children first, um, to rehearse it in front of your school mentor and adapt it. The Thursday is then enacting. So on that Thursday, you use everything that you've done Monday to Wednesday. And on the Thursday is a case of you, right, okay, this is it. I'm going to give this a go now. I'm going to try this. I'm going to reflect on this. I'm going to adapt it. I'm going to do it again. And it's that kind of coaching thing that we would see on the Thursday. On the Friday, that will either be online live again, like the Monday, or if it's timetabled on a, on a Friday where you're on campus with us, then it will be on campus. And again, this one is the what we would call an assessment. So it might be that on the Friday, you know, we ask you to, to plan and deliver a short phonics session that focuses on questioning. So you're using all that knowledge that you've gained on those Monday to Thursday, and now we're looking at it on a Friday where we can give you that sort of bespoke, individualised feedback, opportunities for you to reflect on what's happened that week. So that's sort of the structure of, of, of the intensive training and practice from 2024. Um, and as I say, those sort of aspects there, low-level behaviour, modelling worked examples in maths and assessing pupil progress um, are sort of the contexts, and that's the structure that we follow. So... I'm hoping that makes sense to you. And then finally, just some um, frequently asked questions that prospective trainees have asked us in the past regarding this course in particular. Um, it, it tends to be things like, can I do placements in my home school? Yes, that's possible. As I say, we need that head teacher agreement form. And then it's a case for the placement office to sort of get in touch with your head teacher. Schools have to be sort of DFE compliant. They have to meet certain criteria. Um, if your school is used for other placements, especially if you're in sort of Norfolk, Lincolnshire, um, Nottinghamshire, you may have seen some of our trainees before. And if that's the case, then the school is does meet those that criteria. Um, but obviously, if you're in a school which hasn't worked with us before, then that's when the placement office would just do some background checks on the school in terms of compliance and what they need. Um, and then, yes, you could do your, two of those placements in your home school. Um, something else that we get asked normally is, do, do we get to pick where we can do our placements? And again, the answer to that, the short answer is no. Um, for that reason that I, that I just sort of talked about, that there are there are a certain set of guidelines, of guidelines that ITE providers have to follow in terms of sourcing schools. So it's not just always a case of it being in an alternative setting, as in going from one school to another school, two minutes down the road or potentially a school within a federation or a trust, it has to provide you with different opportunities as well. So we're thinking, you know, you've got to think more along the lines of the opportunities of the types of children within the class, of um, the, the sort of size of the school. All of those things need to kind of be taken into consideration. 
Um, so the placement office will source the school, that developing school for you. That being said, if you're in a multi uh, a multi trust uh, or a large mat, or you're in a federation where there are sort of com contrasting schools within it, then again the placement office that would be the first thing they would look at. Okay, so so no, it's not a case of you or your school having to pick where to do that developing placement. The placement office will do that for you. Um, someone else, someone else sort of said, and it always makes me laugh. Is it hard? Is it a difficult course? Um, yes, I think people often make the assumption that the program is part time because you're able to earn whilst you learn. You're able to continue working um, in a school um, when you're not on placement. Potentially, that could be the five days a week, you know. But it's not a part time course, it is a full time course. It's the way that it's been structured that allows you to kind of keep working where you can. Um, and I think that's the biggest hurdle for trainees when they first come onto the programme. That's the first hurdle that they struggle with, um, the intensity of it. And it feels intense because you're continuing to work. So again, you'll see it on that head teacher agreement form that um, we don't stipulate it. We, we just say that it's been discussed between you and your head teacher, that maybe they look at ways of supporting you with study, maybe releasing you for half a day, um, a day, whatever it might be. Um, but please don't think of this as a part-time route. It is, it is a full-time one, but it's 16 months. And again, the advantage of that is, yes, it's an intense 16 months, but unlike PGCE, you can continue to, to work, you continue to earn, and in 16 months, you're coming out with qualified teacher status. And I think, you know, that's a fair trade-off uh, in my mind for the intensity that comes with it. Uh, another question that people sort of said is, they've started the course um, and now they're not sure um, that they want to teach. Can I start one course and transfer over? Um, no. So because it's a top-up degree, the, the program is validated as PTS with QTS, so it wouldn't be possible to necessarily drop the QTS. Equally, if you start a different top-up degree, let's say you have a top-up degree in um, early childhood studies as a top-up, and then you think, actually, I, I do want to teach. I want to see if I can transfer over to our course, to PTS. Again, unfortunately, that's not possible. Um, and again, that's to do with those DFE requirements. If you remember me saying about the 120 days, the 20 days of, of, of ITAP, we put you out in schools within three or four weeks. And all of the learning that sort of come before that is all underpinned by something called the call content framework, which is a requirement from DFE. Um, so it would mean if you're transferring from things like education studies or early childhood studies as a top up, it would mean that you've missed out on that bit of learning. So it, it, it isn't possible, unfortunately, to sort of transfer from one course into ours um, and not always possible to transfer from ours into something else. But of course, if that's the case, come and talk to us and we can look at finding ways of making that happen. And then finally, just a couple more questions. Um, one person sort of says, you know, what happens if I don't have a job in a school? Um, you can still apply. You can still apply for the course. Um, even if you're volunteering in a primary school for two days a week, volunteering counts. Um, so you can absolutely join the course. You can apply for the course even if you're not volunteering, um, as long as by the time you enrol, you've sourced a school where you are volunteering. Do you see what I mean? So you don't need to have that in place right now before you apply. Um, you can apply and then it will be a condition on, on enrolment that you have to provide us with details of this school that you're either working at or volunteering in. Um, I work at an SEN school. Can I do my placements there? Yes, you can. So even if it's in an SEN school, you can still do those placements there. But remember that that middle placement, that developing placement needs to be in an alternative setting. So it might be that it's going into a mainstream school. It might be that it's going into a different SEN school. 
um, but we have to provide you with that with that opportunity. Um, what is the head teacher form? I mean, I've, I've explained that head teacher form a, a little bit there, but it's that agreement, it's that tripartite agreement between me, well, not me, but between BGU, between you and between the school. And it's that agreement to sort of release you for those on-campus days, for placements, um, for ITAPs. I've sort of said there as well, they may also agree to negotiate time for study, but we don't specify that they must. Um, because all schools are different, so it, it's up to the school. And then finally, do I just apply and get accepted? Um, not quite. You can't see that text because my face is over it, but um, you'll be asked for interview. Again, this is a DfE uh, requirement. We need to sort of interview prospective trainee teachers, and we want to as well. We, we want the best, you know, that we, we want to make sure that what we're bringing through the programme is are the best trainee teachers that they can be and therefore one of the best ECTs at the end of the programme. So it will be an interview. Um, we offer them online, we offer them face-to-face, -face. you can choose, um, but you simply apply through the U through UCAS um, and then admissions team will get to you with a list of dates and you pick a date and like I say, it can be online or it can be face-to-face. For further information, feel free to scan the QR code on the left to visit our website, or if you feel that this is an appropriate route for you and you want to go for it, brilliant. Um, we'd love to welcome you. Uh, you can apply straight through UCAS by scanning the QR code on the right. Applications are already open um, and they'll continue through to around about summer for 2024 um, because it's the, it's the top up. Any further queries? There are two routes that you can go to. To either you can email me directly at christopher.ives at bishopg.ac.uk and I'll respond to you straight away. Or we offer fortnightly drop-in sessions on Teams. So if you scan the QR code on the right-hand side there, it will take you to our Eventbrite page. You can see the dates there um, that run from around about 5pm till 6pm every other Thursday. And you can pop along and ask any question that you want. No question is too silly. Um, and yeah, look forward to, to, to meeting you there as well. Thank you very much for listening. Um, speak to you soon and hopefully see you very soon um, on our PTS course. Thank you.